Ah, okay. So, I finished reading this book. This book here. That is Ken Fuller. Uh, Winter of the World. This is like part two of the, uh, the Century Trilogy. Well, I read. Let me tell you about Ken Fuller. You know, I used to read a lot of spy novels, so I came across Ken Fuller. But reading his novels throughout the years. But then I ran into his book when it first came out called uh, Pillars of the Earth. And I said, wow, it was, it was like historic. In other words, he writes spy novels. But as you know, when people are authors, they got to do research and they blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so he built this Mount Pillars of the Earth about cathedrals and how they got built in Europe. Okay? No, we're not going to the African big of the cathedrals. We just leave it. That's, that's what the book is about. So this is his perspective, the history of uh well, the his, history of Europe, whatever. And then, so so then, it, after that, it wrote another one, uh, like a historical thing, too. I think this one was called World Without End. I think that's the one. Uh, and then, was it Fall of Giants? Anyway, wh wh whatever he wrote. I read the, the follow-up book for Pillars of the Earth, and then he, I don't know what else happened. And then, then he went to this series here, uh, Fall of Giants, I think, was the first one. Uh, in this series, in this winter of the world, but in, in reading this, I, I read the book. You know, it's like you know, a lot of pages, like nine hundred and twelve or something like that pages. But I've been reading the whole book. Let me just sum it up for you. Hold on a second. Hold on. A second. I got this. We went. Uh, I know this is way beyond New Year's, but New Year's we spent in uh, East London uh, on the beach watching the fireworks, and uh, it was at this. Uh, I call it this. Uh, uh, Bed and breakfast, but whatever it is, but they're backpackers. But you know, the backpackers, as you know, all that I know, traveling the world, backpackers, they always have to think for tents. So we had bought a tent. So anyway, we had bought a tent. And so that night, instead of spending the money at the backpackers, well, we spent money at backpackers, but we set up the tent and on a property for the backpackers, therefore we can use the, the you know, the toilet facilities, the, you know, the bathroom, you know, shower, whatever, have you, have a kitchen there, blah, blah, blah. So, it's, so when you backpack, if you, if you can do the, uh, the thing about, uh, you know, backpack, I mean, um, tents, hey, it saves you a lot of money. You know, I think the regular room maybe for, would cost something like two, 250, I'm just going to say number, I don't want to say what the, the number, 250, backpackers only cost 80 for set up your tent for one person. Anyway, so, and by there, there's a store in five that I think is called uh, Ginger Lovers. See, so it has Ginger Lovers. And look at this Ginger Lovers thing. What do they have? Here's, here's the ingredients. The ingredients are uh, ginger... Sorry about this. Got my reading glass. I got to put my reading glass. Oh, I don't know what the thing is. Here we go. Uh, Contains ginger. That's the first ingredient. Garlic, lemon, and then it has Sims Magic. Well, that's kind of suspect. Sims Magic. I don't know. Maybe he's just adding love. So let's just say it's love. Okay. So, and so this was the ginger and garlic, right? Ooh, powerful. And then my, my, you know, we get uh, we get mountain carrots and mountain ginger, rather mountain carrots and mountain garlic. No, mountain carrots uh, from the for our roster friends. And uh, you know, so my wife had put some mountain carrot in, in this cup, so I had some mountain carrot to it. Very healthy, very good. Makes you feel like you're doing something. Anyway, back to the point. Marina's book near the end. You know, you got this whole thing is, but it's like basically the thirties. The the third uh, starts from the beginning of the century until about the nineteen forty-five or forty, whatever, forty-nine or something like that. So it's the whole thing arrives of Hitler and all this stuff. So the, with the whole book of this, and now near the end, I'm not going to do all the characters. I just want to read you this this uh, this thing right here, right? Uh, uh. This 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 woman, she was a counselor and she was a politician, and she got attacked by these by these people. This is after World War II, and this Berlin was just uh, was being sectioned off, but it wasn't the war hadn't come up yet. Okay, um, uh, and when she was attacked, and then uh, 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 I won't go into the whole attack. Let me go here. Uh, Carla got home at eight. Uh, there was no sign of Eric. Werner was shocked to see her bruises and torn dress. What happened, he said. Are you all right? She burst into tears. Right? You're hurt, Warner said. Uh, should we go to the hospital? She shook her head vigorously. It's not that, she said. I'm just bruised. I've had worse. 
Then I remember half worse because she has World War II. A whole bunch of stuff happened in World War II, whatever happened. And World War One it had a little bit of World War One at the end. Of uh, it's not that I'm just bruised. I'm, I, I've had worse. She's something in a chair. Christ, I'm tired. Uh, who did this? He, he asked angrily. The usual people, she said. Uh, they call themselves communists instead of Nazis. Let me repeat that. The usual people. They call themselves communists instead of Nazis. But they're the same type. It's 1933 all over again. I'll leave that. That's why I'll stop there. But let me just read that again. The usual people, she said, they call themselves communists instead of Nazis. But they're the same type. It's 1933 all over again. It got me thinking, they're the same type. You know, because she went through the whole the, the Nazi occupation. Now that now the Russians are in her section, and they and they they the fact that the, the historical remember these historical novels they they novels they, they usually wrap around some love interests, whatever have you. But also they usually use, use a lot of facts in it. You know what I mean? And so one of the things that was said, I can believe it. You know, is that you know the Russians came in, but the Russians. Like, you know, they would liberate, liberate people from a camp, but then the Russians would come and steal your watch, steal all the gold in the watches and stuff like that. So the Russians were worse than the, well, the same as the, as the Nazis, right? Hmm. So, it got me to think of, because I was going, but before I get to that, sorry, sorry, I'm jumping around. Before I get to that. So I finished that book, and then I had to do another book. So I, um, I was walking so the street, and I said, it's, Frank Yerby. No, you wouldn't know this, but Frank Yerby is one of my favorite writers, right? I think it did he write? Did they have a book list for him too? He wrote a book. This came in 1956. This book came out. But he has a book. They don't list it here. Uh, I think this one. He wrote the Dahomian. I believe that's the one. Dahomian. No, he said it was Dahomian. So what big deal? Okay, that's about the Dahomian Empire, whatever. But if you read the Dahomian, then you read Market uh, Walker, uh, uh, Jubilee, and then you read uh, is it Ernest Ernest Gaines, um, his um, the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Those three books like that. Then you have a whole of African American history, right there. Those three books, and it's better than reading Roots because Roots. Every, I won't go into Roots, but it's just better than that. Okay, okay. Now I'm gonna talk about really. So I, I, so I was thinking, hey, let me have some some Frank Kirby. I need some break for this big. Novel, whatever happened. But then I remember I had sort of my Murakami. Murakami, uh, this is the the wild sheep chase, but he's a Japanese writer. Now, when you read, reading is something different. Your comprehension is this is is totally different than if somebody reading to you or you get your audio books or whatever happened. But his, his when you read Murakami, he takes you to some other place, you know. So I forgot should I be taking some other place? I read some Frank Yerby, because Frank, Frank Yerby gives some accurate stuff too. He does historical stuff, even the stuff sort of like whatever. Sometimes some people cause some of his work plantation hours, whatever it is. But um he's rather good uh because I'll tell you one one time when I read a book of his called uh, The Saracen Blade, I think that's what it was. And they basically tell you that, you know, the people like Iranians or whatever have you, well, you know, not Iranians, Iraqis. The Iraqis, to the group around them, they're the ones that started the assassins. So when that happened, and, and that's when um, the United States was thinking about uh, going into, um, where is it, uh, Syria, not Syria, um, Iraq. And I was, uh, at the time, I was, uh, I had a cast on, I was sort of injured. You know, I won't get into the whole thing, but let's just say that, uh, you know, uh, this is the time of, um, I was living in Washington, D.C., or Silver Spring, Maryland, and no, I was living in Washington, D.C., and this is when they had the D.C. sniper. He was actually in Silver Spring, Maryland, but they called the D.C. sniper. You know how the press goes. And I remember walking, you know, I'm injured, man. I got a, I got a, a neck brace on because I had a little accident with the C, and, 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 and I'm walking around thinking, like, hey, I'm at Target Zero, this guy, and I had to go out and get some air. I had to walk around, and I'm going, like, this guy might shoot me. I, I am a sitting target, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, just but I digress. So I those two books, but then I go and I kept on thinking back to this thing about Ken Follett about this, you know, the 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 the, 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 the Russians or the um, the Soviets, whatever they call it, you know, uh, those people are no different 
than the the, 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 the communists. The communists are no different than the, than the Nazis. And they're, they're not talking about necessarily communism or whatever have you. They're talking about people. Okay. So what is about somebody would have gone through the the uh, the the Nazi experience and gone through the communist experience or going through the communist, the early communist experience, and say, but they're the same. Well, but how could they be the same? I thought they were, in fact, weren't the Russians, weren't the Russians fighting the, the, the Nazis and stuff like that? Yeah, they were. In fact, if you look at World War II, everybody thinks that, come on now, look, I'm a vet, I'm a vet, right? But I look at these World War II guys and they say, you know, or, or the people saying that, you know, America won these all these wars. America ain't won a war since, I'm talking about a proper war, I'm talking about Spanish-American war where you propagate something, da, 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 da. I would, and not even Civil War. War of 1812? Okay, War of 1812. That was, that's the last time America won any war. So what? If you look at World War II, those are allies. And most of the brunt of the thing, the Russians, you know, the, the, the Soviets are the ones that that, that that lost the most in that war. The American came in at the, when it came in, they, they dropped the, whatever. They wasn't fighting. They were dropping bombs. They do the very, very thing. So, so far as American and military prowess and all that stuff, and then the weapons that we have now don't work anyway. When I say they don't work, I just mean that, you know, hey, what's going to happen when um, uh, when one, one, one or two, uh, uh, what do you call it, nuclear things go off? It's all over. There's no more war. So it don't matter. You you remember. But it got me to think, and then I, I went, of course, I got Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s books. You know what I mean? I went to the, I was looking up, I, I looked up, oh, here, see, so I'm looking for a code. Because I'm thinking, these people, they're doing the same things. They're bullies, you know? C-O-D. So they must have a code. I'm trying to put it in my brain, you know? This is how my brain goes. How I jump. O-D. C-O-D. Uh, so I look. It takes me places. Okay. So I think of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s code. And so I looked up. Well, I try to look at the word code, but they don't have the word code. They have the word, they have uh, the phrase code white, code work, and codify. So I'm going like, let me check this out. So let's look it up. Code white. Use this term to apply uh, to the intent and the actions of white supremacists, racist men, and racist women, collectively that directly or indirectly result in the establishment, maintenance, expansion, and refinement of the system of white supremacy racism in um, any one or more areas of activity. Okay? Now let me go down to code work. Right? Use this word to apply to the process of making a detailed plan for thinking, speaking, and acting to produce the best possible results for which the plan is made. So if you have a code, that means you, you should have a plan, or you apply a code to a plan, or you, you're, you're, when you're doing your plan, you have a code. Somehow it works, right? Now, it has a note here for this code word. During the, during the existence of white supremacy racism, every person in a known universe should be producing a counter-racist code. Hmm? Right? A uh, plan, or plan, if you will. Uh, for thinking, speaking, and acting to replace the system of white supremacy racism with a system of justice, right? Balance between people. In this area, in every area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, law, labor, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter war, okay? Um, then it goes to the word codify. Codify, use this word to apply to any and all thought, speech, and action that is designed and intent intended to produce a specific result that consistently and efficiently satisfies those who seek to produce the result. Use it to apply in any way of getting things done the same way each time it is done. So, what do I get from all this stuff? Well, a few things. Well, for one thing, you know, the uh, the racist, about racist, the, the white supremacists, you know, racist men, racist women, uh, other people, uh, bullies, whatever you want to call them, right? They have a code. <laughs> they fall in keyboard. Just about a way. You, you can call them Nazis, you can call them uh, communists, you can call them whatever you want to call them, but they're still doing the same thing, which means they're operating out of the same code. There you go. You know? So when I do my work, what I'm thinking, I'm trying to do so. I'm really trying to embrace more of Miss Neely Fuller Jr. because I think that his his thing is 
spot is accurate. You have to have a code and you have to stick to your code. A lot of people say the code, the code. Now, what are they talking about the code? What code are you talking about, right? But in reading Mr. Lily Foley Jr., if they talk about that code, then I'm cool. That code, then I'm cool. What I'm talking about is like this. Look, these glasses for reading. That's what these glasses are for. They're not for looking out. They're not for looking stylish, whatever. They're for reading. That's, so when I want to read something small or whatever have you, that's not too small. If I want to read small print, you know, when I want to read small print, then I use the glasses. I may see much better than if I want to read red, right? So it's a code. So if people keep on saying, be on code, be on code, what are they talking about? No one's showing me what their code is. Right? Well, Mr. Daly Ford Jr. has. You know, so if your code includes, you know, sniping on people or putting down people, whatever have you, that's not part of the code that I want to use for, you know, to, to get rid of this other thing because that's what the, the, the Nazis and the communists and all those kind of people, those bullies do. They come, they do things to provoke you and put the, put you in their, in their, in their little, you know, scheme to, 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 to bring you into their mosh pit. You know what I mean? So, so, so I'm saying that. If you're going to do these kind of things or, or do this thing, this thing, this liberation thing or whatever you want to call it, you have to have a code. And your code's got to be tested. And Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. has been thinking about his code since the 50s. And every time somebody comes up and try to challenge him, if you, look, if you really look at listen, listen to thought, speed, and action, you say, hey, I don't have a better code than that. So that's what you do. You follow your codes. So follow, find your code and follow it because that's what you're supposed to do. That's the only way you're going to um, beat up on the bullies because they, they got codes. <laughs> they got a lot of them and then their codes hmm. oh you know what their codes do that's just a message from me T from the Patterson saying the trench to better letting you know what I only suspect from my little hobbles here in the eastern cape of southern Africa 